Okay, so welcome to part four of the Bookmap educational course. Uh, we're going to go through the uh, advanced applications, the confluences, and uh, enhanced execution. Okay, risk disclaimer, we'll start off with that. Trading equities and futures involve substantial risk of loss is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, you become a member there and you'll have um, uh, access to free resources and then you can uh, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Okay. A little bit about me, I've been trading for about 10 years in a variety of markets. I'm the product specialist here at Bookmap and lead the um, uh, education in trading uh, and uh, expert in the order flow and market microstructure. Okay. So you can reach out to us at Twitter at, um, at bookmap underscore pro, uh, that's our Twitter handle. Uh, and then Bookmap on YouTube, you can subscribe there to our uh, channel and um, get the most, uh, th these two, uh, the Twitter as well as uh, YouTube, you'll get the most up-to-date um, uh, information. All right, and then uh, reach out to us again at support at uh, bookmap.com with any questions. Let me show you the um, playlist here uh, for the educational course. Okay, so uh, if you go to our YouTube page here, uh, and let's go to home, okay. Uh, you can see them down here just because they've been uploaded recently, but you can click on the playlists, okay, and then click on uh, Bookmap Education Course, okay, and then you can see parts one, two, and three, uh, and then this fourth part will be uh, included uh, later today. Okay, and this is where you can follow us on Twitter uh, at that, um, uh, uh, at bookmap underscore pro, all right. Okay, and I'll get to any questions at the uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, so uh, lots to go over. Uh, today's goals, we're going to go over the advanced applications, okay, confluences at uh, our setup levels. So um, uh, let's kind of review uh, just uh, quickly what we went through part one. We went through the very basic, uh, but they're but they're very uh, powerful and uh, pretty, pretty advanced. Um, uh, market mechanics, understanding exactly how these markets work. Okay, so it's basically forgetting everything that you've learned about candlesticks uh, and um, uh, indicators and derivatives, and really understanding how price uh, works and how the markets move. Uh, and then uh, part two, we started to broaden our uh, scope and look at structure and uh, those uh, basic market mechanics within the structure. Uh, and then uh, part three, we started uh, applying that with uh, with setups, okay? Looking for opportunities. Uh, and um, uh, now today we're going to look at uh, those uh, those same setups, uh, but we're going to have added confluences, okay? So we're going to look at um, a cumulative volume delta, iceberg orders, uh, large lot players, uh, correlations, and and more, okay? Uh, we're going to be able to enhance our execution by also looking at the API automated strategies. Uh, and then we're going to end the uh, uh, course with uh, more training exercises uh, and put the, all these pieces together. Okay, so one of the strategies we went over uh, in part three uh, was the reversal strategy. Okay, now we're going to look at some confluences. Uh, with that reversal strategy. We're going to get insights um, that precede uh, that setup confirmation. And I'll show you what I mean in just, just a moment here. So the add-ons we're going to look at here, um, the indicators are uh, cumulative volume delta, iceberg detector, and large lot tracker. It's important to note because a lot of, uh, a lot of traders um, uh, start to um, gain understanding of these confluences in indicators and then they look specifically at only those. Uh, these additional studies, they give confluence uh, at a specific price level. They do not offer a signal by themselves. So it's best to utilize uh, them within the context of the setup and that's what we've been covering uh, in parts one through three. Okay. All right, so this was the reversal strategy that we looked at uh, in part three, okay? We saw the, um, uh, uh, you know, basically sideways here at the, uh, at the open, at 9.30 open in the S&P E-mini. Uh, we, we made a lower low here and broke structure, okay? We 
right into higher liquidity down here uh, and then uh, went right back up to the other side and then broke structure yet again up here. Uh, really trappy day thus far at that point. Uh, but this is key to understand that we broke structure to the upside. Okay, So we're, we're, we're knocking out any of the weaker hands, uh, any of those sellers. Okay, uh, And then you can see that we saw an imbalance in that auction and we, started, we saw it starting to trend uh, here uh, pretty hard down into a lower low. Okay, Now down at this area here, we're really uh, eyeing uh, uh, the setup, uh, looking for potential reversal. And at this point, uh, we didn't uh, really have much uh, to go on here. Uh, we had uh, we had a high uh, higher time frame trap here. We went below this low here. Okay, so that could be a trap, and we could go right back up uh, to the other side of the range. Um, but we also we also had longer term high liquidity here. Some of it trading, some of it not. But we do see large uh, red dots in these areas. So it so we we are getting some trades to the downside. Uh, but uh, we also noted here. Uh, point of exhaustion at the at the very end here. There's there's very little trading, okay. Uh, just a little red dot here at the at the very bottom, okay. That uh, doesn't bode well for a continuation to the downside. You want to see very big red dots to the downside, okay. And our volume analysis here, well, we can take a look at that, and we can see our profile here uh, was uh, not showing a lot of volume, okay. So it's starting to dry up. It's look, looking more like a a little bit of like a finished edge here uh, to the downside. Okay. Uh, and exhausting uh, that, go, that uh, uh, coincides with what we saw here at the very end. Okay. Uh, but uh, we're still holding our structure, okay? uh, and uh, uh, we're below the uh, the trend line, and we're also below uh, our um, uh, this swing here. But we're coming into this higher time frame, and this was key. This was the the big um, uh, 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 signal here uh, that we're looking for is our looking at our higher time frame and this was a low on a, on a much higher time frame and we we tap that and then we, we come back into the middle it's looking pretty good though for the downside because we have high liquidity here high liquidity uh, on the offer uh, pressing on price and we're still within our structure okay now the reversal strategy that uh, we're going to go through you can see the, the insights that the um, these confluences are going to give you and it precedes the setup uh, in this case okay so let's just go through it we're at our higher higher time frame level um, our microstructure is um, is not broken yet okay but that's part of the setup uh, the liquidity context uh, we have exhaustion that's true bidding higher that has not happened yet okay that's that's part of that reversal uh, and then pulling the offer and that has not happened yet as well all right, our volume, our volume profile looks pretty good. We just covered that, uh, and we have not seen yet that steady initiated buying volume uh, breaking above the structure. So a lot has not uh, occurred yet. Okay. However, uh, if we look at the cumulative volume delta, it's giving us insight. Okay. The CVD displays the. In, let's just uh, define it here. The CVD displays the cumulative volume changes based on the volume traded by the sell aggressors versus the buy aggressors and it just adds them together uh, then it is displayed as an indicator and as a widget um, on the widget panel okay in this example we'll be looking at the um, a chart range uh, setting for the uh, for the book map cumulative volume delta okay all right so the insight we're getting there okay so we're making lower lows okay but look at our cumulative volume delta Okay, uh, we're making, uh, I wish this would go away. Um, we are making uh, uh, higher lows here. Okay, so uh, there is more buying than there is selling in the aggressor classification here. All right, so that's the divergence we're looking at here. Okay, making those lower lows, but uh, more buying is uh, stepping in compared to the sellers. So something's a little off there. All right, um, and um, uh, let's. Uh, uh, that's the cumulative volume delta. Uh, that exhaustion so uh, makes a lower low. CVD makes a higher high. The conclusion: uh, there is more aggressive buying than selling in that chart range. Okay, selling pressure is beginning to exhaust. Okay, let's move on to another one, another confluence. Okay, uh, the iceberg detector. Uh, what does this look like? 
Okay. Well, the iceberg detector, we see significant iceberg order here uh, at this uh, at this uh, zone uh, between uh, our, our two lines that we had, uh, horizontal lines that we had our uh, higher time frame as well as this swing here. Okay. We see uh, 1,400 uh, iceberg um, uh, orders here or uh, more contracts traded than what was in the book. So let me, let's define it here. What is an iceberg? Okay. Um, a book map generates the iceberg indicator based on the difference between the actual pending orders offered uh, at that price level and the actual number of orders that transacted at that price level at that specific moment. Okay. And the larger players use the hidden orders or icebergs they, to, they conceal uh, their intent to trade at that price level. Okay. Uh, their large limit orders do not display in the limit order book. Uh, therefore, uh, these hidden orders do not skew the auction imbalance. Okay? And this can act as absorption too. Uh, we see it all the time. Right? Uh, so you'll see big volume dots and you'll see a reversal. But how do all those volume dots occur if there is no liquidity at some of those levels? Okay? So you'll see that. So uh, let's let's uh, let's jump back and take a look here. Uh, so what's what's occurring here uh, with the um, uh, significant uh, uh, iceberg order here? Well, you know they're hitting the bid pretty hard here. Okay, we see the red dots uh, taking price lower, uh, but someone's absorbing it here. Okay, they're not showing their their uh, orders in the book. Uh, we we won't see this this iceberg order happen right around this area here. The significant um, uh, liquidity was at, at this level. Uh, a couple of ticks below here, or tick or two, okay? Uh, so that's uh, that's ticking off here. A larger player is getting their fill, uh, and um, uh, but not showing that uh, imbalance in the book, right? Because we saw we can see how the imbalance, like in this area up here, how it affects price and how it's driving price lower. You get an auction imbalance, very very high liquidity, uh, very close to price here, very aggressive. Uh, and then that uh, that'll scare away price as it tries to reevaluate uh, its worth here. Uh, just think of supply and demand, and someone shows up to a market uh, with uh, a lot more uh, vegetables than, uh, uh, or let's say uh, they're selling tomatoes. Okay, uh, and all of a sudden there's a skew uh, in the supply, and that's what's going on here. Okay, so it cheapens the price. Okay, all right, so we had a significant uh, iceberg uh, at that level, and let's take a look at the large lot tracker. Okay, all right, the large lot tracker is displayed here in the current order book column as bars or bars and numbers. It's this white line that you see here in this little white line. What this line represents is a larger player uh, holding uh, the liquidity here uh, that is well, you can see here, like uh, this, these 1,200 orders here at this, uh, uh, this is the highest, I believe, in the book at that time, or very close to it. Uh, and uh, we have a larger player in here, okay? He's holding this much liquidity of all of it here. So it's, uh, it looks like it's somewhere around, uh, you know, 15% uh, uh, or so, something like that, uh, and uh, 15 to 20%. And, uh, and we see a few more here as well, okay? So... They're starting to show size here. So this is an individual actor uh, that is um, uh, holding uh, that many uh, contracts, this percentage of the liquidity here uh, at this price level. Okay? So we have an algo that can uh, uh, approximate that. Uh, by the way that the orders come in and hit the book, uh, that's what the algo, our algo is reading. Right? So we're starting to gain understanding of larger players. Okay. So let's go over the large lot tracker. Uh, it's an approximation of the largest single pending order uh, at a price level uh, if that order crosses a certain threshold based on you know, the adjustable settings, that, that your custom settings in bookmap. Okay. Larger players typically set large block orders in areas where they want to deal. Okay. This can also act as a spoof. Uh, so we have to be careful. Uh, a lot of times they'll purposely uh, um, create an imbalance or skew uh, in that book. Uh, and then the, the cancellation of their orders can create that vacuum that we've talked about. Okay, It's still skewing the auction. We just have to understand the intent of their trade. 
uh, if they uh, mean to trade or not. Okay, so uh, uh, putting all these pieces together, uh, let's take a look here. Okay, um, all right. So at our, at our higher time frame level, okay, the um, let's take a look here. All right, um, as we we're going to move forward here, uh, and then uh, we finally do as we move forward in um, uh, as price, uh, it, it, we saw you know the reversal starts to take place here. Uh, and uh, we break uh, our structure here, our microstructure, all right? So uh, we're at our higher time frame level. Microstructure is broken. Uh, the li liquidity context, we had exhaustion, and then they start bidding higher, uh, and they start pulling offers, okay? Uh, and um, the volume, uh, we saw the volume profile was starting to um, uh, taper off, uh, and, um, and then we saw the initial uh, initiated uh, uh, buy volume um, that that broke above the structure, and this was key, right? This was a, a big part of the uh, part of the setup here. Okay, and then now we have confluences, though. We have we have the CVD uh, exhaustion. Uh, we have uh, large iceberg orders, and we have large lot players at these price levels. Okay, so putting it all together, uh, we can see what uh, what starts to occur here. Okay, pretty pretty nice uh, pretty nice setup, uh, and this preceded. Uh, the setup here, okay. The um, uh, by looking at um, uh, the CVD, the iceberg order, and the large lot tracker, okay. And you can see that um, uh, it, it's still holding here uh, pretty nicely. Even the large lot tracker, we see that there there's still a few more that start to pop in at higher levels here, okay. And then this is where we start to see them pulling liquidity here, and they start bidding it up at higher levels here, all right. Okay. All right, just let's get into the uh, the execution of this. Um, and uh, the way that we were looking at it earlier um, on, in part three was to first identify your targets of high liquidity, okay, and, and consider front running them by a couple ticks. Uh, you want to get filled at that area and take some risk off. Uh, and then uh, that would be our, our partial profits by taking that risk off. All right, uh, and uh, the entry, uh, the context of that move, uh, we're looking for um, a, a pullback uh, to where it broke, um, originally broke from, all right? Now, um, the more aggressive that move, you know, the, the more that uh, we're gonna have to uh, uh, kind of watch it and uh, maybe maybe uh, you just get a, a pullback to a flurry of activity that happened uh, at a higher area, all right? Uh, so you can consider at that point uh, layering in uh, your orders uh, at the in a zone, okay? Because uh, you may have to jump in, and uh, if, if you don't want to move it, and price is moving quickly, you may have to jump in and, and um, uh, use a market order. Okay, basically you'll be you'll be pack hunting along with the algos, okay, and join that initiated buying, okay? And then our stop order. Well, since we see that initiated buying, uh, we place it down below it, okay? So very little risk. Um, uh, and um, uh, this is what we were looking at uh, earlier, okay? So target, front run the higher liquidity here uh, around this uh, 20, uh, 24, 21. Uh, this was our zone of entry as we saw the initiated buying start to happen here as we broke the structure, and we're looking for a pullback into this area here, okay? Stop loss just below here, all right? Okay, however, uh, now, uh, with a little a little more uh, enhanced execution, you can consider using and engaging uh, some of the uh, API automated uh, execution strategies. Okay, we have the chase, escape, and execute. All right, so uh, we can switch those on, and um, uh, that's available up here uh, in the um, uh, uh, th this tool here. Right, and uh, uh, switch that on, you, you'll, you'll see there are three available. There's the chase, escape, and execute. Uh, the chase, basically, uh, it will start to chase price and trail it uh, by the inputted value that you have here, okay, by best price or last price, okay. The escape uh, strategy, okay, that's the next one down. Uh, this one's looking for an order book and balance. And uh, I'll, I'll get to your questions on this uh, just just in case. The um, uh, because uh, it would probably be better to go over this another time. Some of these um, uh, automated strategies. Uh, the um, uh, but we're looking for an order book and balance. So we're looking for uh, if price starts to come down and it starts to head toward 
uh, them here on the bid. Okay. Well, we're looking to um, uh, kind of uh, front run it, but we're looking for someone behind us to support our decision to get uh, filled at that area. If we don't have uh, limit orders behind us to support uh, our um, uh, concept here, or you know, our, our trade idea to go long, uh, then it, the um, the algo will move the uh, order away and escape to the downside here until it finds that liquidity to back it up. Okay, and you can uh, you can look for that skew here with a percentage, uh, and you can um, uh, input the uh, a number of levels you want it to calculate and how how many ticks you want it to move away. Okay, so this is really fine tuning uh, your execution in this area. You're looking for something very specific. All right, and the execute strategy. All right, uh, now this is a uh, uh, pretty pretty aggressive um, uh, strategy here. The way that the, this uh, autom automated um, uh, algo works um, is uh, as soon as it sees um, an imbalance in that limit order book, uh, uh, it will very aggressively move your order uh, up to a specific level. Okay, so you can input the um, uh, uh, the amount uh, and also the amount of the percentage of skew you're looking for. Right. So uh, it'll it'll just move it up very very aggressively. So you won't um, you're hoping that if someone comes in and starts lifting the offer very aggressively, you're not going to miss it, right? And that's what this execute strategy will do. Okay. Now uh, what's uh, what's key here, uh, in in to understand uh, enhancing your execution in this area, okay, is that um, uh, you can uh, you can use um, all of these together, okay. Uh, so you, you can have them all switched on, right? Uh, and um, uh, all three strategies can work at the same time, right? As, one, as, as soon as maybe the, um, uh, that execute uh, uh, strategy, maybe the uh, um, uh, setup is, is complete here and the uh, uh, configurations are met, uh, as soon as that occurs, then uh, this will very aggressively move your, uh, your order up. Right, it won't execute. These these all work on um, uh, limit orders. However, it, it moves it right up there uh, to not not uh, one tick below, but like at the uh, if you're on the uh, if, uh, it would be a buy limit order that that'll uh, uh, be placed uh, on the best offer. Okay, so it's very very aggressive, and you're going to get filled very quickly. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, that's the automated strategies uh, and uh, enhancing your execution in some of these levels uh, with the confluences uh, for that reversal. So let's let's continue on with this same setup uh, from part three uh, and our momentum strategy. Okay, the setup and context. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at it here. Okay, this is what we're looking at. So so this was our breakout to the upside here. We broke that that structure here. Okay. And we had time and acceptance holding uh, up above here uh, in this area. Okay, uh, you could have gotten in again uh, here, uh, here, or here on the uh, on that reversal strategy, right? But here is the momentum strategy, right? So if you had gotten in, uh, let's say uh, here or here with that reversal, uh, the first target you would have taken your partial up in this area here around that 24.21. Okay, because we're eyeing that high liquidity up there, all right? And uh, now we get another pullback, uh, and um, uh, let's just say that uh, you didn't uh, enter uh, on the reversal uh, down to this area. Instead, uh, you started to see them very aggressively lift the offer in this area, uh, and you wanted to join in, okay? So you're adding to that position uh, when you see that more initiated buying starting to sweep the book to the upside. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to start to dive into this a little bit and we're going to zoom in uh, and it gets a little more complex with this, right? Because uh, we want to understand how um, uh, the volume here is trading uh, and especially in context with the uh, uh, liquidity. Uh, at some of these levels here. So we're going to go look at a, a volume column, uh, our um, a chart range volume profile, OK? 
Okay, so it's a volume profile that's giving us the profile here uh, for the chart range, the viewable chart range. Okay, uh, click right click in this column and then select format and then split it out. Okay, so we're just we're, we've split out the aggressor, right? And we're we're going to look at these and compare it. Um, uh, horizontal, not horizontally like this, but uh, skewed a little bit. We're comparing the bid versus the offer. Okay, the volumes. Uh, and um, uh, let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, not only are we going to set it up that way, but we're going to reset the column data. Okay, uh, we're, so it's uh, back to uh, to zero. Okay, so you can either use reset now, uh, or you can reset by double clicking on it if you have this uh, checked. So you can very quickly just double click in this column here. Um, with your left mouse button, and it will reset the uh, the data. Okay. Now we're at the bottom of the range, uh, and we're resetting the data. Okay. So we're starting to understand here. Now we start to um, we see price creeping up, and it comes back into the range here, and then we start to see the initiated uh, uh, buying right uh, right in this zone here. Okay. Look at the uh, split volume. Okay, this is where you're going to see if a lot of a lot of traders like this. A, a lot of traders like looking at the numbers. Uh, I mean, we can see it here graphically with the dots uh, very clearly. Uh, in fact, I, I kind of prefer that. Uh, I'm very accustomed to it in Bookmap. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, uh, dome and uh, price ladder traders out there that are looking at this column here. Okay, and uh, you have that opportunity in Bookmap as well. You can configure all of these columns into a dome that is uh, very, very advanced, uh, more than uh, uh, any other uh, dome I've ever seen out there. Okay, you can look at many different data types, uh, and you have many different configurations for those data types. Okay, and resetting uh, opportunities. Okay, so what we're looking at here uh, is just uh, uh, more buying than selling. Okay, they're just uh, lifting the offer very aggressively. Okay. And you can see it here, 6, 6, 665 versus at 1679. Uh, uh, we have 734 here versus 956. Now these guys are on the on the um, retreat. Okay, uh, you can see that they continue to um, uh, lift the offer pretty pretty aggressively in this area. All right, it's pulling price up. Okay. Uh, another uh, uh, column that we have in Bookmap is the time and sales. Okay, uh, this is new in uh, in 6.0, and um, uh, we also have filters for that time and sales. Okay, so this is going to go along with uh, the uh, the uh, aggressive uh, volume here that we split out. Okay, so you're going to you're going to note that your time and sales. Uh, look at look at all the uh, uh, buying here. Okay, it's overwhelming uh, the, the selling. Right? Uh, we have uh, much more uh, aggressive buying than, uh, than selling here. Right? And I filtered here uh, this. I don't want to look at uh, one and two lots. I'm looking for larger orders here uh, because uh, these guys are jumping in quickly uh, and they're moving price uh, uh, to the upside very quickly. Right? So uh, I filtered it for 10 or above. So 10 is the minimum size. Right? So anything that's greater than 10 here is going to show up or 10 or greater. Right, and, uh, and and we can see that overwhelmingly, uh, this is uh, uh, much more uh, uh, buying than selling. All right. Okay. Now let's take this a, a bit further uh, and uh, get into more granularity um, and um, uh, sub-second uh, uh, levels here. Even though, like, uh, uh, we're still looking at 30 seconds of, of data here between each vertical dotted line. Now you can you can zoom in uh, and see nanosecond level data if you want, uh, but um, uh, you know most of us aren't trading at uh, at a frequency like that. Uh, however, uh, this is very uh, consumable uh, from for a point and click trader, right? And we're starting to now understand the context of this aggressive uh, buying. Okay, we can see it here. Uh, in our in our data column, our time and sales, as well as the big green dots lifting the offer up into higher levels, okay, back to this 20, 24, 21 level. Look at them starting to pull here uh, on the uh, on the offer. Okay, we got a lot of nice insight here. These guys are getting out of the way and pulling from uh, from this level on up to here. Okay, so we can see them pulling the um, orders here on the offer and adding them to higher levels. 
Okay. Now at this point, because we're zoomed in, we can also start to look at another um, uh, add-on indicator, and that is the imbalance indicator. Okay. And this makes a calculation. There's two. Uh, one is for the book imbalance, and the other is for the volume imbalance. Okay. The uh, the volume imbalance here in this area uh, is just the traded volume on the best bid or offer. Right, and it's just a simple calculation. It's kind of like your your cumulative volume delta in a sense, uh, but um, uh, it 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 says a percentage here, uh, so um, uh, calculation's a little bit different. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the concept here is that um, we know that there is more buying than selling. Okay, and this is getting pretty significant here. We have 14% uh, more, okay, buying, and uh, that's that's this is skewing that right here. Okay. We can also look here uh, at the subchart and the volume, and we can we can very very clearly note it. All right, we can see there's more buying than, than selling. Okay, and uh, and of course we can always look back at the dots. The dots uh, very telling of what's going on in this area here. Okay, uh, we can also um, start to look at our uh, our CVD at this level. Okay, uh, we see that um, uh, that aggressive buying is uh, is is uh, being noted here in the CVD, and we see the bump up in the in the cumulative volume delta. Okay, so they're getting out of the way, uh, and they're getting aggressive with the buying volume. All right, so uh, let's enhance the execution here. Okay, so previously we're looking at um, you know front running it by the uh, finding the um, uh, liquidity uh, on the uh, on the offer and that identify those targets. Uh, consider taking the uh, uh, partial profits and then, but we're looking for, this one's different, we're looking for a trend continuation here. Okay? Uh, you might have to, or most likely you're going to have to um, uh, enter with uh, aggressive uh, market buy order uh, when you start to witness that large initiated buying. Okay, Because you're not going to get a pullback. Uh, and uh, your stop order, again, will go below that initiated buying. If they're serious, they're not coming back. Okay. Uh, and this is an excellent strategy for scaling into that current position that we were um, for that reversal that we're already we're we've already taken partial uh, and then uh, we're we're adding back in uh, with the momentum strategy here. Okay, so this is what we were previously looking at: our time and acceptance, uh, you know, stop loss below here, uh, the um, uh, joining in here, uh, looking for the first target maybe up into this area, but we're looking for continuation. Okay, uh, and um, now uh, let's uh, let's uh, incorporate uh, some of the uh, API automated uh, strategies. Okay, in this case, we're going to look for only just two. Okay, we're not going to look for the uh, escape. Uh, we're just we're going to chase uh, and uh, and execute. Those are the two strategies. Okay, you can look at any combination of these. Uh, you know, you can look you can have all of those selected or none of them selected. Or, or just one of them selected. Uh, so uh, they all work together, and that's the way that they were developed. All right? uh, you can uh, uh, fine-tune uh, your trading execution here uh, with the custom uh, settings that you have uh, within uh, uh, the inputs here. Okay? So uh, we'll look at the, uh, the execute here uh, and just get very aggressive here. Uh, uh, you know, check the, uh, the box here and check this box here to enable it. Uh, and uh, and set your limit order, right? So, um, in fact, you can set it be before this occurs. Okay. So, you're if you're starting to anticipate uh, this uh, happening here, well, you're going to get a nice fill. Okay. Uh, you're you're going to get filled probably up in this area here. Okay. However, if you um, uh, you know, it's possible though with the uh, uh, the execute strategies, you might get that imbalance uh, and um, uh, and then you'll get executed, but then all of a sudden maybe they uh, they start hitting the bid very aggressively. Uh, so you'll get caught up in it early as well. So you, you'll pay that price, uh, but um, uh, instead of waiting for that confirmation, all right? Okay. All right, and uh, as you can see, the uh, we, we, we saw that continuation to the upside. Uh, and uh, again, looking for that, uh, that potential entry on the pullback here. Again, we did not get it here. Right, and that's where you can start to utilize again uh, some of those API strategies, okay? The uh, algo or automated strategies, uh, and you can uh, you can jump in there uh, and um, uh, look look for that continuation to the upside, okay? Because you did not get a pullback here at all. In fact, you got the uh, the book flip 
uh, and um, uh, higher um, uh, higher bids here. Okay, and we saw the continuation to that upside. All right. Yeah, that was the uh, end of the day here. It was at uh, 24, 36 and three quarters. Okay, one more here. The uh, uh, pullback strategy, uh, the setup and uh, and context. This is in a trending environment. Uh, we're looking. We already see the structure has broken, uh, and we've swept to an, uh, a lower or newer level. Uh, and then uh, we see the um, uh, aggressor trades. Uh, they trade through uh, the area. They absorb. Uh, they they all of those limit orders uh, trade, uh, and they continue to uh, to trade. All right, so they trade through those areas. Uh, the um, the volume we see nice uh, big new cluster of volume at the at the uh, newer level uh, that has the correct uh, delta. Uh, you know if it, if it's to the downside then you're looking for more red, and if it's to the upside it's more green. Okay, what we're looking for um, is the uh, the pullback uh, to the uh, low volume node uh, on on low volume uh, into the um, uh, that low volume node. Okay, so this was the uh, the setup uh, that we went through in part three. Here's a break of our structure. Nice uh, volume cluster, a lot of red. Uh, we get that pullback here. We see exhaustion right at this little point here. There's a little bit of trading, but uh, it's not complete exhaustion. Uh, but um, uh, we immediately rotate back down lower. Uh, we come right up into the low volume node that occurred here, uh, and we're looking for that continuation to the downside. Okay, that's the pullback strategy. Okay, so let's take a look here at some of the confluences, and we're going to zoom in. All right, we're going to look at the cumulative volume delta, uh, and then the iceberg, large lot, imbalance, and uh, and then we'll um, uh, introduce you to the correlation tracker. Okay, so uh, the cumulative volume delta, we see the same type of exhaustion. Now it's pretty slight here, actually. I, I was kind of surprised. I, I would have expected this uh, to um, usually uh, with this pullback. Um, a strategy, you see a lot of exhaustion up in these areas, and uh, you'll see that uh, price will come back to the original area here where it dropped from, uh, and uh, instead of just seeing like a slight um, uh, divergence here, uh, you're going to see pretty heavy divergence uh, in that exhaustion. Uh, the CVD will be way down here somewhere, uh, and that's that's very typical on this pullback strategy. Okay, in this case, it's uh, it's just slight. All right. Okay. Iceberg detector. Now, this is an, an, another way of, of using this ice, iceberg um, uh, indicator here. Okay. Because we um, we see the breakdown here, but we don't see one significant order uh, that takes place. But we're starting to read the context of all the icebergs that are uh, occurring here. Okay. So look at look at the, uh, on the offer. Uh, these guys are getting um, uh, you know placing their uh, uh, hidden orders uh, up here on the offer and they're getting filled okay 59 56 164 what about on the bid how, how does that look well we see 25 2 15 22 I mean that doesn't compare right so we know uh, we have insight uh, that these guys are um, uh, you know uh, here uh, getting filled uh, and uh, looking for that continuation to the downside now it is true we see 179 here uh, at a little bit higher area, and this guy is probably flipping out in some of these lower areas down here. Okay. All right. So, uh, but putting this into context, uh, that iceberg detector. So, um, I start to, uh, to to note that in specific areas. Okay. I mean, you can see 20 go off here. Uh, it's not. This isn't really giving us too much insight, uh, but uh, uh, you'll you'll see it again and again. Like uh, the um, uh, much more. Um, uh, you usually go if it's at a s significant level in the setup. Uh, you start to see these guys um, uh, placing their hidden orders in those areas, and that's the insight we want, right? Uh, that's where these add-ons and confluences can help. Okay, and this makes that setup much, much, uh, uh, much higher probability. Okay, large lot tracker. We see a few here, not many, uh, and. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, they're starting to place some of their larger orders in these areas. Uh, and then imbalance indicator, uh, it's not very skewed. I mean, we have a negative six on the volume. Uh, and the book imbalance is, uh, is positive five. That's because we can just see that they're here on the bid uh, getting filled. Okay. Okay. 
And uh, let's move on and, and look at the correlation tracker. Okay, we're gonna we're looking at the ES here. Okay, uh, that's the the symbol we're uh, we're looking at in this strategy. Now I had to um, uh, take the chart here and kind of uh, uh, scrunch it up a little bit so that I could fit the Nasdaq uh, within here. So we're looking at the Nasdaq futures uh, as well, and that's the blue line. Okay, so. Look at how the uh, we see the break here a lot more significant uh, in the Nasdaq, and that's usually the case. There's, it's it's a, it's a lot more volatile. There's less liquidity compared to the S and P, uh, and we see a nice quick break to the break uh, downside here, uh, and we see like um, a kind of a, a A B C D back up into uh, where it broke from uh, up in this area here. Uh, so uh, and and then you see this is actually breaking down again uh, before the uh, before the S and P is. Okay, so we're getting this added confluence here by looking at another uh, uh, correlated market. Okay, this can be a really powerful um, uh, indicator uh, if you can uh, uh, look at the um, uh, the right correlated market. Uh, maybe um, uh, with the S and P, maybe you want to uh, have an uh, opposite correlation with the bonds, uh, or maybe you want to look at the dollar index. Uh, you know, it, it's or maybe you want to look at uh, a sector leader uh, with stocks because you can because uh, we now have, we now have the uh, a DX feed. Okay, so whatever it is, uh, the correlation that uh, uh, you're looking for, uh, then um, uh, yeah, uh, gold versus the uh, Aussie dollar. Uh, you know, or you know, oil and and the CAD. You know, whatever whatever it is. Um, uh, or gold in the cat as well. It, it, you know, there, there's all sorts of correlations, and they are, they're always uh, shifting and uh, and changing. Okay. All right. So let's let's pop over here, uh, and uh, maybe we'll see a better opportunity uh, with the Nasdaq. In fact, there's all sorts of ways that you can play this now uh, with the correlation tracker. Okay. Uh, you don't have to be directional. Uh, you can start to hedge. Okay, so uh, uh, maybe you're looking for a much bigger move in the NASDAQ because look at the nice nice move to the downside. Uh, we see the pull into higher liquidity here. Well, we see the pullback here, uh, and we can go through the same process here with the uh, uh, all the different uh, confluences. Well, I look at the, the move back here. Obviously, it's not quite as high, uh, but uh, we, we do have the CVD uh, showing that uh, a bit of exhaustion up in this area. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah, we see negative uh, negative volume balance uh, on the overall. Uh, the uh, large lot tracker really not showing us much here, uh, and um, uh, iceberg indicator uh, not not seeing too many here. Uh, not seeing too many, so uh, not getting too much insight from the Nasdaq on the uh, iceberg detector. Okay, uh, but um, uh, you know that's uh, it's up to you how how you want to play it. I mean, you can uh, maybe you find a better opportunity. Uh, in that NASDAQ, uh, so maybe you jump over there and take the trade there, uh, or uh, maybe uh, you, you want you want to buy one and uh, uh, sell the other, uh, looking for uh, uh, it to return back into uh, its uh, usual um, uh, relationship. Uh, whatever whatever it is you you want to do, uh, or maybe you want to trade both of them. Um, so um, uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, a, a really nice way of. Um, uh, starting to integrate uh, more market activity to confirm your your trading strategy. Okay, so the execution on that pullback strategy, right? Identifying uh, areas of higher li liquidity is, was the first thing. Okay, we're always looking for our targets uh, and uh, consider front running and buy a tick or two, uh, and then uh, consider taking the, the since this is trend continuation, I uh, take those pr uh, partial profits. Okay, uh, and uh, and then. Um, uh, that's where you front run that liquidity and take your partial profits. It's beautiful because you, you can see it right there in Bookmap, right? So uh, take advantage of it. There's the liquidity. Look how they're behaving. If they start pulling that liquidity, maybe you want to pull your order and follow them down as well. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the entry on that pullback. Uh, now this was originally how we looked at this uh, on, with in part three. Uh, set your limit orders immediately after you see that break. Right, uh, and uh, in the um, uh, low volume node area, uh, you might want to be aggressive because there's not going to be a lot of orders that trade when you get that pullback. Uh, it it trades back into exhaustion, right? So consider that uh, because uh, otherwise it might come up and uh, 
uh, almost maybe uh, a high percentage of the time, it hits your level, but you don't get filled. Okay, if you were one tick lower, you would have gotten filled. All right, and uh, your stop loss. Well, we, we cover this. Uh, there's a, there's a range of opportunities you can uh, you know uh, where you can place your stop uh, or uh, scale into this uh, pullback strategy as well. Okay, scale back in on the POC as we'd mentioned. Uh, your stop loss, if it's aggressive, is just above the um, uh, low volume node or back in the range, uh, and then um, or uh, maybe you want to um, I place it above that uh, uh, POC, and that would be more conservative. All right. So that was uh, that was this slide here. Okay. So um, here's your cluster. Here's start to target some of these other areas down here of high liquidity. Okay. Uh, and then uh, yeah, recall the um, uh, you know placing that uh, limit order uh, not uh, right back where uh, it broke from, but maybe a tick lower. Your aggressive stop would be back in the range, and then your more conservative stop would be above the POC. Okay. Now the same thing here on that pullback strategy, though. Uh, this is where you can engage uh, these two strategies here: your chase and escape, and use these two together. Okay. The chase will it will start to chase the market, right? But I have escape on here as well. So if I don't have high liquidity behind me. Uh, it will engage the um, uh, uh, escape strategy and it will move my order away uh, by a, a specific number of ticks. Okay, so this is working, you're, you're working the level. Uh, it's, it's like a market making uh, algo basically. Uh, you know, you're um, uh, kind of holding your position in line looking for uh, an advantage when uh, uh, you have other traders uh, in the limit order book skew uh, supporting your decision. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, the chase and escape. Uh, you can utilize those, or I'm sorry, chase and execute. Um, did I say chase and escape? Okay. Yeah. This should be chase and uh, uh, escape. Uh, and um, you can utilize all of them together. It really doesn't matter. Uh, in any combination, again, uh, as you like, uh, and then. Um, uh, fine-tune this the settings to, to so uh, you have to play with it uh, and get the uh, the settings that you're looking for uh, it'll depend on the uh, uh, you know, the day uh, the time of the day uh, etc okay uh, that's uh, that's that and uh, all right uh, let's end it up here all right training exercises so um, with the advanced settings uh, you're gonna have to play around with them right uh, the advanced setups here, mark up your charts, which confluences give you the best insight, okay? Don't, uh, you know, see what, which one works best for you. Maybe you like the CVD, okay? Or maybe you're looking at the iceberg uh, indicator, but if you start looking at all of them together, uh, that might be too much, okay? So uh, uh, start with one, uh, get good at it, and then, uh, and then fine tune it, okay? Uh, also, uh, Zoom in and out. Uh, what what time frames do these work well for you? As you can see on some of these advanced um, uh, uh, strategies, we're we're um, we're zooming in. Okay, we want more data here uh, on the granular level to uh, to fine tune our execution. Uh, that's what we're uh, our, our goal is. Right. So um, uh, understand the uh, uh, the details and the variations that you're seeing, and then uh, start to anticipate that future price movement. Okay, and this is important. Uh, you become an expert at uh, your setup. This is your business. Okay, S uh, stick to that. Uh, that is the setup that you're looking for, and get really good at it. Uh, and then it's just like uh, a, a, you know um, uh, a, a, any other business. Uh, when uh, when that um, uh, specific setup occurs, uh, that's that's your product. Okay, that's what you're selling or buying. And uh, you're waiting for that to occur uh, again and again. Okay, and just get really, really good at it. Uh, and then uh, you can consider other products and other setups uh, and strategies. Okay, start with one and then just get better at it. Okay, uh, and then the, uh, the API algo strategies, uh, start refining your settings uh, in the, uh, the customization there, uh, how do you want to incorporate these into your trading? You know, do you, uh, are you looking for uh, 
uh, pullbacks? Are you looking for that execution uh, immediately? Uh, it, it, you know, if it's, uh, uh, for example, that um, uh, initiated buying that you're looking for, well, uh, you know, the uh, uh, escape strategy is not going to work too well for you. All right. Uh, and um, uh, uh, this is uh, where we're, uh, this is the end of the uh, uh, education course, uh, but uh, it is the beginning uh, of the uh, follow-up support. Okay, because we're going to go through this every day now uh, in the live uh, daily webinars. Uh, we're going to go through this material. We're going to identify it, uh, and um, uh, we're going to uh, uh, look for opportunities. Okay, we're going to see it in real time. Uh, we're going to adjust it, and you're going to start to integrate that into your trading plan. All right. So, uh, uh, and if you uh, want to review, uh, understand some of the uh, education. Uh, these are all recorded. Uh, they're up there on the uh, YouTube site. You can go back, uh, you can access them, uh, and then come back again to the live daily webinars uh, and um, uh, start to understand and comprehend them uh, in real time. Okay? Okay. All right, guys, uh, let's get through, through a few questions here. Um, Ah, Francisco, uh, not a big fan of the trend lines. Okay, uh, it depends. I mean, uh, whatever whatever it is. I mean, uh, um, uh, I, I like trend lines. Um, uh, I, I think they can uh, give a lot of insight. I also like horizontal lines. Uh, I mean, I see it just again and again and again. Um, you know, so uh, I, I'm a big fan. I mean, we can see that the same strategies here uh, occur again and again. I mean, just, just this pullback strategy here, we get it here, right? Uh, it, we see a, a break of a range here. We see, look at that little sweep up here into a new range in this micro uh, composite, right? And then we get the breakdown here again, okay? And then we see continuation uh, of that breakdown and we get our pullback yet again, okay? And this is the one we were looking at and studying. But you can see it again here uh, or even again here, right? So um, uh, these, these uh, it's, it's very fractal and it occurs uh, again and again. Uh, and you can see the trend line, uh, this, this micro uh, uh, structural trend line is broken. So, uh, and we see a lot of uh, buying activity down here, okay? So uh, they're lining up here and you can start to read the auction down here. So I'm starting to anticipate perhaps a, uh, uh, a reversal. Uh, you know, I wanna see, I, I need more information at this point, but uh, I know that my structure is broken. Now I'm looking for this horizontal line here at, at uh, uh, this may be 42 and three quarters or 43, okay? If we get time and acceptance above that, well, that's new information, okay? Uh, iceberg uh, could be induction to the other side. Um, well, um, why would they, you know, why, why would they use a, a hidden order to do that though? Uh, I, I don't really quite, I wouldn't quite understand that part. Um, so uh, that, I, I think the um, uh, you, you might get a lot more of that with the uh, um, a large lot tracker. Okay, uh, you, you see that a lot. The, you see that large lot trader who will pull that liquidity, and you get that vacuum. All right. So uh, be careful. Uh, uh, to read read that and, and read the intent, uh, and get good at that large lot tracker because it can be really insightful. Um, but um, uh, both ways, uh, by by them uh, showing interest and by them pulling uh, that interest. Let's see. Uh, my settings on that NASDAQ, they were very simple. Um, so uh, correlation, it was just uh, for, the, uh, for the chart range, okay? Let me know if that answers your question, Ken. Uh, let's see, Re liquidity over on the NASDAQ is rejected but not absorbed is key. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, all sorts of insights um, uh, with, with those, uh, Francisco, okay. Uh, Elaine, the, uh, the, 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 Iceberg indicator is the uh, the numbers that uh, I think you're you're talking about. Yeah, next to the dots. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's this uh, 
this uh, here, okay, is the, uh, uh, in, with the version, I think it's 6.0, uh, we uh, have that enhanced uh, iceberg indicator that is now uh, projected onto the chart historically, okay, which is great because look, look at the insight it gave us here, you know, we saw more uh, hidden orders uh, and icebergs here. Uh, so we're looking for that continuation to that downside. So we saw our pullback into that area again. Okay. Uh, let's see. The um, yeah, the correlation tracker is also an add-on uh, as well. You you'll find it under uh, this button up here. Okay. What tools got Bookmap to anticipate uh, difference between absorbing and rejecting of liquidity? Well, I mean, uh, the this tool here, uh, a Bookmap, is is it's not. I mean, the, these add-ons are indicators. Okay, um, it, some of them uh, are are they act as an indicator. There may be some sort of derivative. Uh, like the uh, imbalance indicator is making a you know a, a calculation here, uh, but the uh, hidden order type uh, or the iceberg it, it's just displaying what occurred. Like uh, uh, you know um, uh, there there were more that traded than than what was in the limit order book at that time. Okay, so something's wrong, uh, and it's it's got to be a hidden order uh, because um, or an iceberg because uh, you know there. Uh, uh, something more, you can't have something trade than what is uh, offered or bid. Uh, more than what is trade, more than what is offered or bid. Uh, so absorption, I, I mean, we're showing the same, you know, the same thing here. Like uh, it's not, it's not some sort of, it's just the market. It's just how this trans, transpired. Uh, like, uh, uh, you know, you, you can start to uh, uh, look at some of these areas and um, start to look for, you know, high liquidity here, uh, and um, uh, coming into those areas. And if you want to see it as absorbed, uh, well, then you're going to see the, that that the, these trades take place within that high liquidity. Uh, and if it's completely absorbed, you'll see that the bounce to the upside, right? Because there's no more selling. Uh, the sellers were completely absorbed by the limit orders here. Uh, they're not trading through this level, and you'll see the bounce to the upside. In this case here, they traded right through it, right? The sellers uh, were very aggressive, uh, and they just took it all. They swept it. That's why we covered that sweeping of the book, and that's the distinction and difference here. Okay, rejection of the orders is another thing. Like if you can see them starting to pull in this area here. Note the shades of uh, of gray, but there's still there's still the majority of this liquidity is still in here. Okay, so um, uh, you know you you'll need to zoom in if you really want the uh, the 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 clearest, honest, most honest uh, truth of how that uh, unfolded. Uh, and you'll see that a lot of times they'll be pulling a uh, majority of that liquidity. Uh, a lot of times they don't though too. So uh, you get both. It's, it's a combination. Okay. And uh, that's, that's it. I mean, we don't, uh, uh, we're not trying to, um, uh, uh, it's no derivative. It's just like how this data entered into Bookmap from your data provider, uh, and then it's all plotted here into Bookmap. So it's giving a very, very objective view of the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Francisco. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, any more questions? Uh, if not, uh, we will um, I'll wrap it up, and uh, that will be the uh, uh, end of the uh, education, and uh, we will start tomorrow. Uh, going through the uh, the live markets and looking at this information. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, let me know at uh, support at uh, VeloxPro or support at bookmap.com. Uh, look for, looking uh, forward to any of your feedback. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, just let us know. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.